Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. And today, we're messing around with some pretty cool stuff, like like this guy right here, which moves all by itself. <laughs> nah. So today I'm working on my VNT turbo control system. Professor Dave was here earlier, if you remember him, and he's no longer here, so you guys missed Professor Dave. But at any rate, he came in, and there's kind of two parts to my VNT control system. We're using an Arduino-based code and controller, uh, powering a 12-volt linear actuator to control my Sprinter Van VNT Turbo, which is on my 1984 1.6-liter turbo diesel. So, uh, today we did kind of two refinements. On my end, we refined the mechanical. So the primary failure of this system so far has been the fact that the linear actuator, this thing right here, uh, this thing in here, uh, <laughs> I have uh, roasted about four of them now because it's, I mounted it directly on the turbo and you figure the turbo gets up to whatever, thousands of degrees and it's not a good place for this little thing made out of plastic and circuit boards with solder in it to be. It shouldn't be there. And I didn't come to this realization by myself, but the way to fix that, and instead of just replacing the actuator a bunch of times and breaking it a bunch of times, is to add a cable. So right now I am running a cabling setup and I'll get closer in in a second, but we're gonna mount this on the car and try this out today. And this effectively moves the linear actuator out of harm's way while still letting us use the same control system. On the computer side of things, Dave got Q, which is an Amazon product, or basically something that reviews your code and dumped his code into Q and had it revise it for us and make it cleaner and slightly more optimized. So we're gonna try that today as well. There's just the base code, which we've been using, that it cleaned up for us. And then there's also an optimized code where it's going to try to control the linear actuator better. We'll probably just use the base code today until we iron out more of the details on that. But the exciting thing is that the linear actuator is now gonna be very bomber. Uh, and I'll show you how this works in just one second. So what's important here is that this is actually the actuator that's doing the motion and moving things. This is just an attachment to make it link to the cable. And this is actually the cable. And this end right here, this eyelet, is exactly what's gonna go on the turbo and connect to the turbo actuator. So this is what's doing the actuating and that's what's giving it power. And on the car, I have another one of these cable clamps mounted to the turbo right about here, which is what keeps this end from moving around. So. Just to give you a visual of how this works, uh, it's about 12 volts, and we gotta go the other way. So when we wanna open the veins, we're gonna do this. Kidding, it's already open. <laughs> when we're gonna close the veins, we're gonna do this. And when we open the veins, we're gonna do this. Anyways, you get the idea. It's pretty simple linear motion is what we're playing with. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and throw this in the car. It should be ready to install, besides that this chunk needs zip tied to something. The beauty of this, though, is that with the cable mounted the same thing as the servo, I don't actually need to attach this end to anything for this to work. It just will work. The idea is I should zip tie it to something just so it's not whacking around in my rain tray. And then the other kind of important detail about this system is we can adjust either here or here by loosening the hose clamp and sliding this, how long this linkage is and therefore where our minimum vein position is. So on this car, it's always good to be just a little bit open off of fully closed, because fully closed on this turbo means like zero exhaust passes through it and that just doesn't make the engine run well. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this and we'll try uploading the new software and then we're gonna go take it for a test drive. Here we are, so there you go. That's pretty much the idea. Cable goes through there, runs through the bulkhead and the linear actuator is up here where it's not gonna die but we now have a cable actuated VNT turbo, which should be far more durable. Hopefully it fares well. I'm definitely gonna take it for a test drive. Though, I guess with this kind of modification, we're looking to do multiple test drives and hopefully it survives all of them. In other news, I also have been working on the overheating problem. This is my V1 front valence kind of cover. So I'm covering all the headlight area. It actually funnels in behind the intercooler. 
and in front of the radiator so that we're not losing any air. And then I also moved my oil cooler down. So I don't really expect the oil cooler to do much down here, but the oil cooler isn't doing much anyways if my car is overheating. So whatever, we're just kind of tucking it out of the way. Although it's now kind of at speed bump height, which is a little scary, totally fine. And you can see here, we're gonna channel all this air into the radiator as well. And I think that's gonna do a lot. So we're gonna test drive without any other front covers on here. And before I go as well, I think we're gonna do a quick version one of hood vents. I'm gonna cut two rectangles, just three sides of them though, and then push them up and out so it lets air come out of the hood. I was originally thinking of cutting the back three sides and having it kind of angle up like that, which still might be the better idea. But I could also cut the front three sides, one, two, three, and push it down, in which case I already have like part of the ducting that's pushing the air up and out of the hood. It would kind of screw up this logo a bit more the Union Coffee. So I might just have to put the logo back on at a later date if I ever get a new hood. I'm just concerned that up isn't actually gonna pull that much air out. We're gonna go, we're gonna go psycho mode on this and cut front three and pull these down and into the engine bay as like scoops to pull the air out. <laughs> You know, all things considered, doesn't look nearly as bad as I thought it would. Show you what we got. You got two holes. You can still kind of read the logo if you look at it at the right angle. Uh, they're kind of ugly because they're square, but oh well. Square is easy. And the edges need some help, probably with the flap disc. And then we'll put the hood on. Let's see if I fucked it up. <laughs> Swear YouTube algorithm that was light profanity. Ooh, not quite. This one hits my radiator hose, so that's a flop. This one doesn't though, so that's not a flop. I probably should have offset it slightly, but I figured offset would look bad. <laughs> but of course, onset is dysfunctional, so oh well. I think to start, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I think I could cut off this other panel more and push it back and we'd get the desired result. But this is certainly enough to test and I'll show you what we're working with. This one hitting the radiator hose right there doesn't actually go low enough to help us evac air. This one on the other hand is doing, is gonna do work. It's gonna come whoosh, right out of the hood. And I kind of plan to make this a little more permanent. You know, this is gonna need, this will just fall off probably like pretty soon if I didn't reinforce it. But I can put some, uh, some reinforcements so this doesn't flap around too much. And over here, I can trim it so it's at the same angle and then probably just put a scoop in there. Basically finish it better. But for now, this works. And actually you can still pretty much, there you go, Union Coffee Co. Hell yeah. Thank you, Dave. I have some uh, rounded out sockets. I'm gonna go warranty at Harbor Freight along with something I never used that I'm gonna return. So we're gonna go rip it on a test drive. We're gonna enjoy, pull that off. We're gonna see how the new actuator works. We're gonna upload the refised software that will be the same thing. So we're just gonna check if that works. <laughs> we'll bring the laptop so we don't get screwed if it doesn't work. And then we're gonna be mashing the pedal on the highway to see if we're still overheating with all these kind of aero mods on the front. Hookie! We got to code. We got to car. Got the camera rolling. We're gonna cut this all out anyways. We're gonna start the car. <laughs>
right, so we tried like the optimized Amazon Q version, but like it's pulsing. You can probably hear that. It's like zzz, zzz, zzz. So real quick, we're just gonna put the old standard version back on. So now we're back to standard. So right now what I'm doing is I actually have our minimum pressure set to seven and our maximum pressure set to three. So I'm essentially forcing the system to hold drive pressure at seven PSI when I hit the gas. So right now we're at about a half a PSI of exhaust pressure. And it's doing a good job, it's holding it. So that means we're working. We'll bring the laptop. I, no, we're not gonna bring the laptop. Actually, we don't need it. With our new front end setup, assuming the cardboard doesn't rip off at highway speed, we'll be nice and cool the whole time. Let this piggy warm up for a second. Off we go. So just that we're all on the same page after everything I said. Currently we're running new and improved radiator cooling venting, except that we haven't cut a hole in the shroud big enough yet. But we'll just see. We're running same old, same old Adreno code. And we now have our cable linked linear actuator control speed and second gear servo or my second gear is still as fried as ever i have a set for 20 pounds of drive pressure and 22 pounds of boost which pretty much means we're gonna get 20 psi out of the system doesn't really matter what you set boost to if drive pressure is low and the car is about warmed up so we can rip it if we want. Yeah. All right. Third gear. just absolutely rail this car it doesn't it doesn't even get a chance all right we're going down to fourth gear pressure that's always good okay our coolant temp has not budged uh, I feel like a lot of that is the fact that the oil cooler was squarely covering like most of the available area for the radiator to get air yeah if anything we're running cold now this is sick 
And just by moving that oil cooler out of the fucking way, uh, we got a lot more room for air to come in and go through the radiator. And then we also blocked it effectively such that it has to go through the radiator, which is important. All right, well, that was pretty much the interesting part of this test drive. We can do a little more. Sounds kind of tinny. I don't know what changed, but probably the fact I'm about to blow the turbo for like the third time. Okay, so some quick notes about our test drive so far. We haven't overheated whatsoever. In fact, it's been downright locked on 190 degrees, which is perfect. Even though I was fully giving it the beans, like basically the entire time. Boost and drive look great. It has good pickup. The Arduino setup is still working. It hasn't glitched out. The linear actuator is still working. The car feels really fast. Oh man. So basically all the notes I took into account and modifications I made, modifications, excuse me, are working great, which is, which is mind blowing, honestly. Okie dokie. Uh, that was a wildly successful test drive. We'll put it that way. Uh, my cooling system was dialed. It didn't overheat. And I think I've kind of found the crux of that thing's problem, which is also that the cooling fans just don't come on. Like the fan switch that's mounted on the radiator must be broken or it doesn't get voltage, one or the other, because... I was idling here and we hit 210 just idling here. And that's because the fan wasn't on. Fortunately, I have a forced fan toggle switch. So I just turned that on and it's all gravy. Other than that, we're good to go. Oh, my customer is here. Uh, and the control system worked mint. Uh, the actuator's working great. The code's working great. Everything's working great. So I got to do up my cardboard and metal for the cooling system and then just keep polishing stuff. Thanks for watching.